So this video, so this video is on the preparation of amines. And we've got two aims to know how aliphatic amines can be prepared and to know what aliphatic means, and know how aromatic amines can be prepared and what aromatic means. So first, the word aliphatic basically just means a compound or a um, carbons that are joined together without being aromatic, so no benzene ring or, or similar. So they can be joined together in, in straight lines or in rings as long as there's no um, benzene ring. Um, so to be able to make aliphatic amines, um, you've come across this in Chem 2. Uh, so one way is to use a bromoalkane, sorry, not a bromo, a haloalkane, so it could be bromo, and use ammonia, and then that will attack the carbon, the brome will be kicked off, that will create the following compound, or intermediate, sorry, positive charge, charged um, nitrogen, and one of the hydrogens will leave to form NH2 attached to carbon. So these groups here could be anything. As long as you've got a haloalkane and an ammonia, you can form these aliphatic amines. And then what will happen is that this uh, compound will then attack this again, and you can form um, multi-substituted amines. So you can form, this is going to be a this is a primary amine, you've got an N attached to two H's and a carbon. You, you will also get secondary amines and tertiary amines. Um, a secondary amine where you've got only one hydrogen attached to the nitrogen and tertiary amines where you've got no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen. And if you're not careful, you'll create those um, when you don't want to. If you just allow this reaction to keep on uh, substituting with the uh, haloalkane you've chosen. So what you need to make sure you do is use an excess of ammonia if you only want to make the primary amine. If you use an excess ammonia, then that is what the haloalkane is more likely to collide with uh, than the amine that you make. Um, obviously, you're going like, to make a little bit of secondary amine, but you're not going to make nearly as much as if you didn't use excess ammonia. Another way of um, creating an aliphatic amine is um, to use a nitrile group. So you may have already made um, this nitrile compound. Um, and then what you do is you have to um, reduce it. And that will create your, your amine. What do you use for reduction? Well, you should know these now. Uh, these are important. You need to know the four different... Um, reductions, but you can use lithium aluminium hydride. Um, you can use that, or you can use hydrogen and nickel, uh, hydrogen with a nickel catalyst, and that will reduce your nitrile group to um, an amine group. Aromatic amines are where you end up with a benzene ring with an NH2. To make that, if you start with a benzene ring, you'd have to first turn that into a nitro benzene. And in order to do that, you need conch H2SO4 and conch nitric acid. Mix those together, you make a nitro ion, and that will turn that will then react and, and make a nitro group on your benzene, which is discussed in a different video. You then need to reduce that to form your amine. And to do that, you use um, HCl, hydrochloric acid, with a tin catalyst. So here's a typical question you may get asked. Um, so the preparation amines may get asked in, in amongst uh, organic synthesis questions. So here it says... Hello alkanes such as CHCl3 are used in organic synthesis. Analyze three step synthesis of this amine starting from methane. Your first step should involve the formation of CH3Cl. In your answer, identify the product for the second step and give the reagents and conditions for each step. Equations and mechanisms are not required. So all you need to do is say what you're using. So the first step 
where you're turning uh, methane to CH3Cl, you're going to be using chlorine and UV light. So this is free radical substitution. Uh, you'll remember from Chem 2, and that's what you need. Chlorine and UV light, so you'll make your chloromethane. Step 2, you're trying to turn CH3Cl um, into something else. If you notice, you've got an extra carbon in your final product. You're starting with just one carbon, or rather here you've only got one carbon, but your final product has to have an extra carbon. Now if you're ever adding an extra carbon, you have to go via a, a nitrile. That's the only way you know that you can you can add a carbon. So here you're going to use, um, um, you can use HCN, it needs to be ethanolic, so dissolved in ethanol. And then what you'll get is CH3CN. It'll basically replace your chloride ion. And then step three is to go from CH3CN all the way to your final product CH3CH2NH2. And as we've said before, you can use hydrogen and a nickel catalyst, or you could use Al sorry, L-I-A-L-H-4, and both of those will reduce your nitrile group down to an amine group. Here's another question, so it says here, draw the structure of a secondary amine formed as a byproduct in reaction 3. So, here, you've reacted this with ammonia, basically, to form this primary amine. Remember what I said at the very beginning of this, this, pri this amine can then attack your original haloalkane to form um, a secondary amine. So what will happen is, the lone pair on this nitrogen will then attack this carbon and this bromine will be chucked off. And so this carbon is going to be attached to this nitrogen as well if you're going to form a secondary amine. Now you're only going to make this happen once because a secondary amine is going to have 1H, 1H attached to the N as well. So your product will be N with an H on it and then either side of that N you're going to have C, C and then you're going to draw what's on there. So the C has got two C's either side of it. with H's on it. And that would be your secondary amine created. That would probably then react again with your original um, haloalkane and you'd form a tertiary amine. But this question's only asked for the secondary amine, so that's where you've got to stop in order to answer this question.